Hey everyone, this is Mrs. Spence. This week we are looking at converting rational numbers. So we are going to start by looking at converting improper fractions and mixed numbers and look at the relationship that these two things have. All right, let's jump right in. Okay, so we're going to start by talking about the rational numbers that we are working with this week. So rational numbers, remember, are any number that can be made to look like a fraction. So it could be any whole number, positive or negative, because you can take any whole number, put it over one, and it looks like a fraction. Obviously, fractions can be made a fraction. Decimals can be a fraction and percentages can be made to look like a fraction. So we're going to work more later this week on how to convert these fractions to decimals and to percentages. But just a quick refresher, if we're working with a common proper fraction, something like one half, we know that fractions represent a part over the total or over the whole. And you might remember in elementary school making fractions like this, okay, where we have a circle and we cut it into two equal parts. And if I said to shade one of the parts, how much did we shade? And we would say that we shaded one half of that circle. And that would be correct. Or if I'm really hungry and you invite me over and you have pizza and I eat one half of your pizza, you could say that we only have one half left. Okay. Um, but when we can convert these to look like other forms. So I talk about rational numbers kind of being like the trinity in math. Okay. They are the same thing. They will have the same value. That's why we get to put this equal sign here. Um, they just have different forms. So they're worth the same amount. They just look different. Okay. So if we think about this very common fraction that we're used to, we would be able to say, Hey, what's the decimal form of one half? And we would say that is 0 0.5 or zero and five tenths. And we could also say that it is equal to what is the percentage form of one half. If I said that you had a test that was worth 100% and you only got half of it right, what would your percentage be? You would maybe know that it was going to be a 50%, which hopefully we will be doing better than that. So all three of these numbers look very different. We have a fraction, we have a decimal, and we have a percentage, but they are all worth the same amount, okay? And you can also think about this in terms of money. So if we think about fractions and decimals, we only think, or we think about things that are the part of something. It doesn't make a whole or a complete yet. Um, and when I think about this, I think about money. So if you can think about money, we usually have bills, dollar bills, and we have coins, okay? Coins of all different kinds, shapes, sizes, and monetary value. So I always consider the bills to be like our whole numbers, okay? They are the whole thing, all right? We can have ones, we can have tens and we can have hundreds, okay? And they can look like our place value chart. And then we also have things back here. And these would be considered the parts of a whole dollar bill. All right, for instance, if I wrote this, that we had 50 cents, you would know that that's not quite one whole dollar yet, but it still has value and it still has worth. So we wouldn't want to just ignore it. And that's the same thing when we're talking about our rational numbers. They have worth. They're just not quite a dollar yet. All right. So now that we remember what these fractions, decimals, and percentages are like, there are two different types of fractions specifically that we are going to now work with. So we talked earlier about this fraction being considered a proper fraction. It's proper because it's in the form that we're used to, okay, of small number over larger number, the part over the total whole, which would be larger than the section or the piece or the part. All right. So that's why we call this proper, but we will begin to see improper fractions 
and mixed numbers. And these two things are equal and have the same value, just look different. I wanna show you a visual of what improper fractions would look like. So just a silly little visual that I actually had ChatGPT create for me um, to help you visualize what an improper fraction would look like. So a proper fraction has the smaller number in the numerator, the larger number in the denominator. An improper fraction would reverse that and it would have a larger number in the numerator, let's say like 11, and a smaller number in the denominator. So obviously this looks flipped and reversed to have the whole on top and the part on the bottom, when actually it's still a part over a whole because that's what fractions or rational numbers are. But this is saying that we have parts that are the size of a seventh and we have 11 of those. So we have 11 sevenths shaded. So that means we're going to have some holes all complete or circles completely shaded in and some parts on top of that. Okay, let me show you this visual that I was talking about. So this visual looks improper. All right. It looks like we have a messed up situation. Normally we see an adult carrying a smaller child with the smaller child on the shoulders of the adult. That would be proper. If we saw this walking down the street, we would definitely do a double take. Okay. First of all, that would be a very strong kid. But this is a visual for improper fractions where you have the larger number on top of the smaller number. And we call it improper just because it feels and looks backwards. All right. So hopefully that little visual can help. All right, so let's go back to our improper fraction. So again, this is still parts of holes, and we're going to look at some examples with some drawings. Let me show you what it would look like if we talk about five halves. All right, five halves. If Let's do our circles again, and let's create halves. And if we said that we had five halves, that would be saying that we shaded in five of these half pieces. So there's one, there's two, there's three halves shaded in, now four halves shaded in, and five halves shaded in. So with that, we can see that we have an entire circle colored in, and not just one entire circle, but two entire circles shaded in with one half shaded in on this last one. So this is technically saying we have holes and a half still, or if we're talking about money again, we would have $2 and 50 cents, a half of a dollar. Okay. And that is where we can see that mixed numbers are equal to in value improper fractions. So if I were to come over here and say, this is actually two and one half, that five halves is equal to two and one half, that would be an accurate statement. That would be a true statement. And we definitely see that. Here's one hole, two holes, and one half completely shaded, all right? And we can convert this 11 sevenths as well into a mixed number. And I'm gonna show you in just a second how we would do that. But this has the same value of one hole and four sevenths. All right, so now let's take a look at how we actually do the converting of improper fractions to mixed numbers and also mixed numbers to improper fractions. And then you're going to look at a slideshow after that and do some examples with the slideshow. All right, we're going to start by converting improper fractions to a mixed number, just like we were just doing with the five halves. Okay, we use division to help us with that. Now you could draw examples like we just did and you could color them in, but I couldn't imagine doing this next one of 17 thirds or even our 11 sevenths before because drawing a seventh is very challenging, all right? But if we were to do this first one that we can see, this is the example we just gave. So we have one half and two halves makes a whole three halves and four halves makes the second hole. And the fifth half is shaded just half of that third circle there. All right. So we would see that we have one, two and a half, 
two wholes and one half, okay? But let's look at that with division. All right, so we remember that five fraction bar two, remember that the fraction bar means division, okay? And if you look at this, doesn't it look like we have a division symbol when we have number, fraction bar number? It creates a division symbol, all right? So we need to remember to write it that way inside of our bracket. This is the most commonly made mistake here is putting these in the wrong spot. So what I want you to do is actually say what that says. So five fraction bar means divided by two. And when we're putting them into our bracket here, our division bracket, we need to remember that five would go on the inside and what you're dividing by is what's gonna go on the outside. So your divisor and your dividend, okay? And now we can just set up an, ex an example where we do our division here. All right, so how many times will two go into five? We know it goes two times, and then we go back around. Two times two is four, and now we need to find what's left over. So we have one left over that didn't make it into a grouping. And right here, instead of saying remainder one, or even instead of making this a decimal, because again, we want it to be a mixed number and mixed numbers are whole numbers with fractions, not whole numbers with decimals. But we would want to make this a fraction. So we would take this remainder and it's gonna become our numerator. And our original divisor or our original denominator is going to stay the denominator of our mixed number. Because again, if you remember the visual example, we were dealing with halves the whole time. So we're gonna keep it in halves as well. So we have two wholes and one half. And this would be the mixed number that is created from the improper fraction five halves. All right, let's take a look at 17 thirds. And we're not gonna draw that one out. We are just going to do our division problem, convert it with division. So again, we say 17 divided by 3, so the 17 is going to go inside, and the 3 is going to be our divisor on the outside. Okay, how many times will 3 go into 1? None. How many times will 3 go into 17? And we know that it can go 5 times. So come back around, 5 times 3 is 15. Find out what's left over. We have two left over, and now we're not going to use that as a decimal. We're not going to put remainder. It's going to become the numerator of our fraction, two, and we were dealing with thirds originally, so we're going to stay at thirds. So 17 thirds is the same thing as five and two thirds as a mixed number. All right, now the C method is how we convert a mixed number into an improper fraction. And we're gonna look at our visual as well. So we're now gonna reverse the process and do mixed number to improper fraction. All right, let's take a look at what it would look like if we were shading. So if we had three whole, we would circle or color in the full circle here, one, two, and three times, and then one half. All right, so we could then take this and count to make our improper fraction. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven shaded parts. And we were dealing with the size of a half. So we had seven halves shaded in. Okay, now again, we're not going to want to do that. Look at the next one. If we had to create eighths, circles that were cut into eighths, and we had to shade six of them and three more of them, we would be drawing and shading for a long time. So let me show you the way that we convert them without having to draw examples. All right, and I use the C method. I feel like that's the most... Um, understandable way and quickest way. So what we do is we say, okay, we're dealing with halves and how many of them were, thir were shaded in a total of three plus a little extra, okay? So the C method, let me get a different color here. The C method is actually called that because you go this way 
and it looks like a C that you created. All right. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your denominator and multiply it by your whole number. Okay. And then you are going to take that whole number that you get and add it to the numerator to get that extra piece. And then you're going to put it back over the original denominator. So let's look at this. Two times three is six. So we get six when we do two times three. Now look at this. We had three holes, which is what this three represents, and they were split into two pieces. So that's where your three times two comes from. So you have your size of slice is in halves. That's the two. And then you had three of them totally shaded. So one, two, three halves were shaded. So you get six parts altogether. One, two, three, four, five, six were totally shaded. That's where the six comes from. All right, now add the numerator. This is that numerator we're talking about right here. So we had these six here represented by the holes. And we had a seventh one shaded plus one. And what size shape were we dealing with or what size fraction pieces were we dealing with? We were dealing with halves. So we have a total of seven halves. So that's where the C method comes from. You're doing your size of your shape, or excuse me, size of your fraction times how many whole pieces were totally shaded plus any little extras. And you put them back over the fraction size. Okay, so let's look at this example doing the C method. I'll write myself a reminder to start here and go around in a C. All right, and we have eight is the size of the fraction piece. We're talking about eighths. So eight times six to get 48. And then what do we do next? Yes, you've got to add that numerator. You've got to catch the extra pieces and add the numerator in there. So we have a total of 51 pieces that would be shaded. And what size pieces? Eighths. 51 eighths is the same thing as six and three eighths. All right, so I hope that that helps you see how we can convert improper fractions and mixed numbers back and forth to each other and how we can see that they are equal to each other.